بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we praise him for all thanks and praises are due to him for all favors of life, including this favor that Allah has enabled us to have this session to welcome a great month, the month of Ramadan, the month that is uh, around the corner and it is about to knock at our doors, inshallah, very soon. So uh, it is really a great and exciting opportunity to talk about uh, this wonderful month coming upon us indeed uh, we need to be excited uh, we need to really get into a special enthusiasm and a special enthusiastic mood uh, because thinking about ramadan and talking about ramadan is really heartwarming for true believers Ramadan is a month that uh, really, you know, brings so much blessings that if we understand the blessings of the month of Ramadan, then we better get excited. And if we are not excited, then it's a problem. You know, there are some people who say that, oh, again, Ramadan is coming in this summertime, almost summertime and, and uh, hot weather. And, and uh, especially in this, uh, pandemic time with the coronavirus and all the difficulties. How can I fast? How can I, you know, make it uh, successfully, uh, you know, uh, to fast and to worship Allah and especially those of us who are working from home and uh, all kinds of, you know, working hours that we have. So uh, unfortunately, some of us may have some negative thoughts and concerns about it which is very sad, you know. <laughs> it's really sad if we have those kind of negative thoughts or concerns about it, because that is definitely from shaitan. Otherwise, if we just think about the blessings of Ramadan, then definitely we will get excited. You know, why we should not excite it when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us this great month of all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, bounties and, and forgiveness. When the Prophet وسلم, says, Man Sama Ramadana Imanan wa Ihtisaban, Wufira Lahuma Takadama min Dambi, whoever fasted the month of Ramadan based on Iman, based on belief, and based on Ihtisab, based on really hoping the rewards and accountability, and all of the sins of the person would be forgiven. SubhanAllah. You know, we all have some sins, we all have some. Uh, um, you know, mistakes and, and shortcomings. And when Allah tells us that now a month is coming in which all of your sins will be forgiven, all of your sins in the past that you have done will be forgiven, shouldn't we get excited? <laughs> when the Prophet ﷺ tells us that as soon as the month of Ramadan starts, the doors of uh, hellfire will be closed, the doors of hellfire, hellfire that we should be always worried about. That what if some what if I end up to hellfire? What if my deeds are not accepted by Allah? What if I uh, some of my sins are not forgiven? And if I end up to hellfire, that should be always the concern. And the Prophet ﷺ says the month is coming in which the doors of hellfire will be closed, meaning that if anybody who is worshiping Allah in this month and dies in that state of worship, you know they will not go to hellfire. The doors are closed. And the doors of Jannah will open, the doors of Jannah that, uh, you know, all of us should be dreaming entering Jannah all the time as, as Muslims and throughout our lives, we should be thinking about Jannah all the time. How can I make it, make it there? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, the, uh, you know, uh, the doors of Jannah will open, meaning that if we die in this month, anybody who leaves this world in this, during this month while fasting, while worshipping Allah, then uh, the doors of Jannah is open, subhanAllah, meaning directly the souls will go there. And the Prophet ﷺ says that the uh, shayateen will be chained in this month. So shayateen, which is the biggest challenge for us all the time, whenever we want to do something good, whenever we want to do something useful, 
you know, shaitan is the one who comes and brings us all kinds of excuses and reasons and logic so that we are dissuaded from the obedience of Allah. And shaitan will be chained, meaning that the impact of shaitan will be minimum on people who worship Allah in this month. And shaitan basically uh, it cannot do much if you really uh, worship Allah in this month. At any time, shaitan cannot do much if we don't want to give in to them, but especially in this month. So uh, shouldn't we get excited when the Prophet وسلم, says that a, uh, an action of fard, uh, uh, obligatory action in Islam, will be counted 70 times more, 70 times more uh, uh, in this month. Shouldn't we be excited? When the Prophet وسلم, says that one uh, uh, you know, nafil deed will be uh, counted like a fard, you know, an optional thing in, in Islam will be counted like a obligatory, uh, so important. So shouldn't we get excited when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is the month in which Quran was revealed, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. You know, shouldn't we get excited that the month of revelation of Quran is coming basically the anniversary, the, the time that we should celebrate uh, this uh, 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 special bounty of Allah, the Quran. Shouldn't we get excited? Uh, and, you know, the month of the night, night of Laylatul Qadr will happen in this month and the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Subhanallah. You know, when you think about it, this month is full of all kinds of gifts and blessings and bounties that we better get excited and we better get into a special spirit of Ramadan from now on and start counting the days off, you know, now minus nine, minus eight, minus seven, minus six, you know, every day we should keep counting and get more and more excited as the month gets closer and closer, inshallah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know, told us during the end of Sha'ban, which is these days, uh, that uh, the, oh Muslims, the Prophet وسلم, addressed the, uh, all Muslims and says, Oh Muslims, a noble and generous month is, uh, uh, is coming to you. A month in which a night is better than a thousand months, and its month is the month of charity, month of patience, month of mercy. And in this month, gates of paradise will open and gates of hellfire will be closed and devils will be enchained. Uh, so the Prophet وسلم, specifically gave this kind of khutbah before the month of uh, Ramadan and telling us about all these great uh, you know, bounties of the month of Ramadan. And indeed, you know, uh, when we think about it, that uh, what Ramadan brings to us, then you know, our mood must change, our thinking must change. And no matter how much experience we have with Ramadan, you know, this should be now a different, a new kind of opportunity. Because, you know, there are some of us who say that, well, wait a minute, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not a new Muslim. I'm a Muslim. I have been a Muslim all of my life and I have uh, fasted uh, so many Ramadans and now uh, it, to me it is not a big deal. Basically, uh, so what? Ramadan comes and I'm going to fast during the day and I'm going to offer taraweeh at night. So what? Right? If, if that's a, our attitude, then again, it is very sad and it's we better change our attitude that no, uh, no matter how many Ramadans I have left behind, this Ramadan will be a new and unique opportunity for me and more for my family. And this uh, Ramadan will be and inshallah, we, we want to make this Ramadan an outstanding Ramadan uh, uh, for all of us in such a way that throughout our lives in this world and in the day of judgment, we can be proud of it. That yes, that Ramadan, Ramadan of 2020 really made difference in my life, really made me a different person, really brought me so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a result of this month, I made so many big changes in my life. Yes, those changes are what will remain and what will really leave behind uh, this month. You know that this month otherwise will be just a regular Ramadan unless we make some big changes 
in our lives uh, 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 that that uh, this Ramadan becomes unique. So that will not happen unless we make some plans for it. You know, if we just treat Ramadan like every other Ramadan, of course, you know, uh, not big changes and just some routines. But if we really think about it, that I want to really get maximum benefit from this month. And I want to make this Ramadan very unique and outstanding in my life. We need to start planning from now on. And in the next few days and few nights, we keep talking about it with ourselves, with our Creator, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, making a lot of du'a that Ya Allah make this Ramadan unique and wonderful for me, and talking about it with our family members, uh, with our uh, friends and others through social media and other means, uh, that what what we should do in this month, how we should make this month unique and different. The month is already unique because of the coronavirus this year. The month is already different, uh, and Ramadan is the, really in 2020 is different in every country compared to any other Ramadan in the past because of the social distancing uh, uh, and because of the restrictions that uh, we all are going through, and because of the reminders and lessons that we have got as a result of this coronavirus a very deep level of awakening for the whole world that more than 3 billion human beings are in lockdowns right now and 200 uh, uh, more, more than 200 countries have been affected by it and all those uh, you know arrogant people and all those oppressors now they are questioning their own authority and their own power and and uh, uh, and all those other individuals who never thought of any problems then they said i have money i have this and I can solve any problem. Now they are stuck and they are basically locked down in their houses. You know, it, it is really a time that people have changed already. The hearts have become softened much more than any other year. And for ourselves also, all of us, I'm sure that we are looking at towards this month in a different way. And so the month is already unique because of the unique situation this year that we will not be able to go to the masjid you will not be able to perform taraway in the masjid and you will not be able to do that you know even the qiyam in the masjid and, and we will not be able to offer our prayers in jama'a in, in masjid and uh, but alhamdulillah allah has given us the opportunity to worship allah still in our houses wherever we are with our families together we can still offer uh, congregational prayers jama'a prayers with our family members and we can still, you know, uh, do a lot of great things. In fact, it, it, it was now saving our time that we would be commuting to uh, the masjid and parking lot issues in the masjid and many other things. Now we are free from all those uh, issues and we can relax and we can uh, fast and worship Allah in an ideal way in our houses uh, and, uh, you know, without worrying about a lot of other social aspects of the society so you know uh, this ramadan actually is becoming uh, very uh, positive in in, 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 a, in a different in a positive way uh, uh, this year compared to the past ramadans because of all these luxuries that we have yes we definitely miss the masjid yes we definitely love to be in the masjid but you know we don't have a choice basically at this time so Allah has wisdom behind it. Allah wants us to fast a month and do taraway in our homes. And this is really unique that Allah chose you and me to be of this generation who is alive to, wit to witness this miracle of coronavirus and this sign of Allah and this special testing time. So the month is unique and different. But we can make the month much more unique by some other aspects some other things you know and and uh, so before we get to that list let us inshallah remind ourselves that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about fasting uh, and gives us an objective what is the objective allah says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun o believers 
fasting has been prescribed on you, has been ordained on you, as it was prescribed on people before you, so that you develop taqwa. Perchance you develop taqwa. So the objective of fasting is to develop taqwa. So we need to really think about this, that I need to develop taqwa. Well, you may say, well, I already have some taqwa, I'm a good Muslim, this and that, but no, it's not enough. Taqwa is such a great quality in Islam that no matter how much we have, we still have nothing. We still have nothing compared to what we should have and what we can have. Yes. So let us remind ourselves, what is taqwa, first of all? Taqwa is a state of alertness about Allah's presence a state of vigilance about Allah's uh, you know, powers, a state of responsibility in front of Allah, it's responsibility in the day of judgment. Taqwa is coming from the heart. And taqwa is something that really makes us smart people, vigilant people. Taqwa is made of three components. So, you know, sometimes some verses talk uh, means one aspect or the other or some hadith. So let us understand that taqwa in its kind of comprehensive definition. Taqwa is made of three things. First, from uh, the first element is the consciousness of Allah. This is the core of taqwa. To understand that Allah is watching me, Allah is with me, Allah is record, uh, monitoring me, Allah is recording me with, through his angels. You know, to understand this and to be conscious of this fact that Allah is watching me, this is uh, the first main element of taqwa. So uh, in this month, we are supposed to become more and more conscious of Allah's presence and Allah's powers. That's number uh, one uh, element of taqwa. The second element of taqwa is uh, to be cautious, to be protective of ourselves. That's wiqaya, you know, protecting yourself from problems and issues. And that uh, a state of uh, cautiousness or a state of, uh, you know, uh, being careful is, was demonstrated by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in a beautiful way. Uh, you know, one time uh, uh, Umar uh, ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he asked uh, Ubay ibn Kaab, another great companion, said, Ya Ubay, uh, what is taqwa? Ubay said, Umar, have you ever walked in a narrow path where there are bushes of thorns on both sides? If you have to go through that narrow path, how would you go through it? Umar Radana said, I would, you know, collect my clothes and I will be carefully walking through. I will make sure that the thorns do not hit me. Ubay said, that is taqwa. Basically, the way that we protect ourselves from shaitan, from sins, from temptations, from doing wrong things, that is taqwa. So this is the state of carefulness, state of cautiousness, state of heedfulness. You know, this is the second element of taqwa. The third element of taqwa is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fear of Allah is different from fear of other things. You know, in this world, we have usually fear from dangerous things or dangerous people or dangerous animals. You know, we have fear from. Uh, but the, the fear of Allah is completely different from that fear. This, uh, the, the fear of Allah is a positive fear. The more fear we have from Allah, the closer we get to Allah. While the fear of other things makes us to go farther away from them, right? From dangerous people, dangerous animals. When we have fear, we go away from them. But the fear of Allah brings us closer to Allah. So it is a different kind of fear. And the fear of Allah can be, again, subdivided into three areas. There are three kinds of fear. The first kind of fear is the fear of uh, displeasing Allah. You know, we should love Allah so much that we should be always concerned about the sphere, about losing that pleasure of Allah. We should, we should love Allah so much that we should be always concerned that what if I do something that 
uh, you know, uh, I would lose the pleasure of Allah. Uh, so that fear should be always there. Just like, you know, in human relations, we a lot of times worry about, you know, displeasing our spouses, our parents, our children. You know, we, are, we love them so much and we don't want them to be displeased. So we are always extra cautious to do things. So that's the kind of, the first kind of fear is the fear of displeasing Allah, that it should be increased all the time. The second kind of fear is the fear of getting deprived from the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we should always be concerned that, uh, uh, that what if Allah cuts down some of the favors? You know, Allah is showering us with millions of favors every second. Millions of favors every second. Yes, that's true. Because, you know, every cell of our body is a unit of life. And every cell uh, is taking a command from Allah to be alive or not, to be healthy or not. You know, and science tells us that thousands of cells die every second and thousands of cells come to life and thousands of cells become healthy or unhealthy. So they all happen because of Allah. And we have billions of cells in our body. Every organ like our heart or uh, uh, lungs is made of millions and millions of uh, cells. So... Now, uh, Allah is showering us with millions of favors every second. What if Allah cuts down some of those favors? What if Allah cuts down the favor of sight from us, the favor of speaking, the favor of, you know, walking, the favor of uh, uh, hearing, you know? What if Allah cuts down? So that fear should be always there. I don't want to do anything to lose these favors of Allah. We have to be always concerned about it. So this is the second kind of fear fear of getting deprived from the favors of Allah. The third kind of fear is the fear of the punishment of Allah in the next life. That if we continue to ignore Allah, or if we continue to do sins, then, and if we leave this world with that kind of condition, then definitely the punishment of Allah is there. And when we think of that punishment, that there will be, uh, fire as much as mountains and higher and and uh, I will be inside that and very severe fire you know that will really make us think twice no matter what we are uh, tempted with in this world we will think about it again that this is, is it really uh, worthy of going to the hellfire even for a second you know uh, so uh, no matter what kind of temptations we get in this world no matter what kind of inclinations we find in certain wrong things, we will not do it if we remember that fear. So that fear, again, is a positive fear because uh, fear of punishment also makes us more responsible in this life. And that uh, really uh, is, should be there. So it's not the negative kind of fear that some people talk about it and they say, oh, people just because of fear they do this it's a positive fear and we better have that positive fear you know just like fear of for example breaking the law of the land fear of when you when we are driving we should have this fear that i don't want to break the law of the roads you know and, and and that fear is a positive fear because it makes us a more responsible driver and a better driver so and a better citizen uh, so it's a positive fear so let's now go back and say taqwa is made of three main elements. First is consciousness of Allah. Second is being cautious about, uh, you know, sins and others. And uh, third is fear of Allah. And then fear of Allah is again divided into three kinds of fear. Fear of displeasing Allah, fear of getting deprived from the favors of Allah, and fear of punishment of Allah. So this is basically taqwa and some verses of Quran sometimes means one of it or the other and sometimes uh, some verses of Quran when they talk about taqwa it means all of it or the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he mentions about taqwa uh, so this is a kind of more uh, comprehensive explanation of taqwa uh, also there are other explanations of taqwa but now uh, the month of Ramadan Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us that it is meant for you to develop taqwa. So every day of the month, we should be really questioning ourselves. Is my consciousness increasing? You know, if we are depriving ourselves from food and from uh, water and from 
very, very legitimate favors of Allah. And for 16, 17 hours or 14 or 17 hours, you know, we continuously say, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do this, that. Why? Because of Allah. So if we really do that throughout the day, uh, for several hours, for 15, 16 hours every day, then definitely it will increase our consciousness of Allah. So taqwa will be increased, inshallah, if we continuously remind ourselves that I'm doing it because of Allah. Allah is watching me. Allah is with me. And remember that. The, the second uh, aspect of taqwa, uh, being cautious and heedful, you know, and, and uh, again, during uh, Ramadan, as we know, we are trying, ext we are making extra efforts to stay away from sins, right? Uh, as, as believers, as Muslims, uh, we should always stay away from sins. But then in Ramadan, usually uh, almost everybody, you know, is extra careful, those who are fasting, uh, about uh, doing any sins. And even about uh, jokes and other things, you know, you are extra cautious how to do it uh, and what to say and what not to say. And uh, that really uh, is important. So uh, since we are extra cautious during Ramadan, then really uh, uh, it leads to increase our heedfulness and our cautiousness. So that's the second level of ta second meaning of taqwa. And then the third meaning or third level of taqwa is the fear of Allah. So the, the, when we fast and because of Allah, because of the fear of Allah, because of fear of his displeasure, because of fear of de getting deprived from his favors, and because of fear of his punishment, we are obeying Allah. We're accepting some sacrifices. Then definitely this will increase that fear. So you can see that how these three elements of taqwa keeps increasing. Now it is important that you and I should be measuring ourselves. Uh, we should be actually monitoring ourselves first every day more vigilantly. And we should be also... Uh, you know, measuring our taqwa, how my taqwa is increasing. And I should ask myself, is my taqwa now more than yesterday or more than last week or more than last month? And we better be able to measure that taqwa. How do we measure the taqwa, whether it's increased or not? By evaluating our attitude towards the commands of Allah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of the time, when he gives us a command, first he calls upon us to have taqwa. For example, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida. Oh believers, have taqwa of Allah and say the word which is firm and right. So uh, first have taqwa, then do that. Because if you don't have taqwa, you cannot do that. Many other verses, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamad lighad. Oh, believers, have taqwa of Allah and reflect on what you have prepared for the next day, for, for basically the day of judgment. So first, have taqwa. Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu taqullaha wa kulu qawlan sadida. Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Oh, believers, uh, have taqwa and be with the truthful people. See, so Allah is first asking us to have taqwa, then he gives us a command. Now. Uh, to measure our uh, taqwa, we need to ask ourselves, how ready I am to obey Allah? Am I more ready to obey Allah compared to yesterday? For example, when the time for prayer comes and the adhan is given, do I really go towards the prayer quicker compared to before and with more enthusiasm, with more happiness? Or I say that, well, again, time for prayer. Again, I have to pray. Again, I have to go and make wudu and all of that. So we should ask ourselves, that shows us, that shows the level of taqwa that we have. How much I uh, love to obey Allah. How much I love to do good deeds. You know, that, that shows the degree of our taqwa, whether it is increasing or decreasing or at the same level. Yes, you know, uh, taqwa is the real, the treasure of uh, a mu'min. Uh, and now uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in general how do we develop taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyu annasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. In the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, O oh people, O oh human beings, worship your 
Rabb, your Lord, the one who created you and the one who created people before you. Worship him so that you develop taqwa. So taqwa is achieved through worshiping Allah. And then fasting specifically is an act of worship that Allah says fast so that you develop taqwa. So taqwa is achieved through obedience of Allah, through worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must re uh, remind ourselves that, uh, you know, uh, how uh, I can increase the worship, how I can increase the taqwa. And uh, also, uh, Allah tells us, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ تَقْوَى Allah says that when you increase things, do increase. But what you want to increase is the taqwa. Ya ulil al Oh, people of thinking. Oh, people of, uh, you know, brains that really have brains and they are benefiting from their brains. Uh, Allah tells us that if you want to increase anything, increase your taqwa. Yes. A lot of times we want to increase other things. Oh, you know, I have to increase this and that. I have to increase the amount of food. I have to increase the number of uh, the, the clothes that I have. I have to increase this, this, you know, materialistic things and many other things. Allah says, if you want to increase, we should increase taqwa. Uh, and even before the Ramadan, how to receive with taqwa the Ramadan and then how to live the Ramadan with taqwa and how to increase our taqwa. Because taqwa also makes us smart. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana wa yukafir ankum sayyiatikum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wallahu dhul fadlil azim. You know, this is in surah, uh, uh, surah number eight uh, and fall. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O oh, believers, if you have taqwa of Allah, Allah will give you furqan. Furqan means the ability to distinguish, the ability to discern between right and wrong, between false and truth, between, uh, between uh, belief and disbelief. So, you know, sometimes uh, we uh, don't know if something is right or not. We don't know if something is really good for me or not. We don't know if something is halal or haram, you know. So if we have taqwa, Allah will give us this extra ability in our minds and in our hearts that we can, in our hearts, it will come that don't do this or don't go to this place or don't eat this or don't, you know, uh, use this. So uh, uh, the taqwa will give us that, that additional intelligence, that additional skill, uh, you know, uh, and so taqwa is really something that we want to increase. And then in, uh, the benefits of taqwa so much in this world and so much in the akhirah that when you read the verses of Quran, you know, Quran is full of explanations of muttaqeen in, in Jannah, uh, that in al muttaqeen mafaza hadaiq wa a'naba, in al muttaqeen fi jannatin wa ayun, you know, in al muttaqeen aminin, you know, there's so many verses of Quran that talks about Jannah that people of taqwa will be there. So taqwa is really a great, great favor of Allah that we need to achieve in this month and increase it, inshallah, much more. Now, you know, we said this month becomes really unique and wonderful if we make some real changes in this month because change is the name of the game in Ramadan. One second, sorry. Okay, there was some extra sound. I had to turn it off. Uh, the name of uh, main thing that we need to do in Ramadan is what? Change. Yes. If we really think about it, as soon as Ramadan starts, we go through very drastic changes. Uh, we start changing our food habits, our snacks habits, our tea and coffee habits. We change our even sleeping habits. You know, we stay late night to do taraweeh and others. Then we get up early in the morning for suhoor and we hopefully do qiyam al-layl more. And, uh, you know, so we are going through some drastic, drastic changes. And changes are not easy for people. You know, there are a lot of people that they cannot even change the habit of drinking coffee. You know that, you know, some of us may be among them that, you know, we are drinking coffee every day or drinking tea, something, you know. And if one day somebody tells us that you cannot drink coffee, a lot of people get so upset and they feel paralyzed. They feel like now I cannot do anything 
because I cannot drink coffee or I cannot drink this, you know. So for a lot of people, making a small change is so difficult. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables all of us to make so many drastic changes in the month of Ramadan. So the, the, the uh, essence of this month is actually the change. But beyond these changes of routines and changes of sleep and change of uh, eating and drinking, what kind of other changes we are bringing to ourselves, to our lifestyles, to our habits? That is the challenge of Ramadan. That is the key of success in Ramadan. And that's what would make this Ramadan unique for us if we make some real changes in, in this month. You know, uh, the Prophet ﷺ very beautifully explained this concept of change in, uh, in Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ said uh, in a famous hadith, "Man lam yada qawl al-zuri wal amal bih, falaysa lillahi hajatun fi an yada ta'amahu wa sharaba." The hadith says, the translation, that whoever does not abandon, whoever does not stop bad words and bad actions, he should know that Allah has no need for him to abandon or stop his foods and drinks. Let me repeat the meaning of this hadith because it's very fundamental and we have to memorize all of us and share it with others. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does not stop bad words and bad actions, Allah has no need for this person to stop the, his foods and drinks. You know, Staying away from foods and drinks is the form of the uh, fasting, is the methodology. And the main thing, of course, but the uh, essence of Ramadan is the other changes that we bring as a result of this hunger and thirst. And changing, basically stopping our bad habits, stopping our bad words, bad language. You know, some of us, unfortunately, we are using some bad language very often yes and some of us are really you know uh, uh, talking in a very bad way with our family members uh, we raise our voice uh, very frequently or easily or we uh, talk in a very offensive way with other people we offend other people directly or indirectly so the prophet ﷺ says if you don't stop that if you don't change that in this month he should know that Allah has no need for you to uh, close your mouth from foods and drinks. And some of us have many bad habits, uh, many other bad actions that we do. Uh, and if we don't stop that, then that's the kind of uh, warning that the Prophet ﷺ gives us. We better stop and we have to sit down in the next few days and list all those bad habits that we have, all those bad deeds that we have, and let us plan, inshallah, and address them. Of course, we may not be able to change everything, but at least some of those things that we want to really make it practical and say that I will change this, 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 inshallah, and in the first week of Ramadan, I'll change this, in the second week, this, and the, or the, the first day, this, and the second day, this. So every day, some little changes, inshallah. And that is the key. If we make some real changes in Ramadan, changes in our habits, changes in our lifestyles, changes in our attitude, our attitude towards Allah, our attitude towards the creation of Allah, changes uh, in our routines. If we really make some changes, some positive changes, some good changes, then this month will stay, inshallah, unique. As long as we try to continue those changes after Ramadan, of course, you know, we should not uh, stop after Ramadan, all those good deeds. So uh, it is extremely important because, as you know, there are many people who become very good during the month of Ramadan, but then after Ramadan, then, uh, you know, the people become, go back to their old ways and they do the same thing that they used to do. And it's very sad. So let's, inshallah, you and I decide that this Ramadan will be different. And this Ramadan, I will make some special changes that I will continue those changes after Ramadan. And I will live this, uh, the spirit of this Ramadan for the rest of the year and for the rest of my life. And that way, inshallah, we can be proud of the accomplishments that we will make in this month. 
that uh, will uh, make us a different person and, and uh, in, uh, especially, inshallah, in the Day of Judgment, when we see our books, that were, wow, Ramadan of 2020 made so many changes in my life. As a result of this Ramadan, I became so close to Allah, uh, so much closer and closer. I, I really became a better human being. I developed much more taqwa. As a result of Ramadan, I stopped doing those kind of things that I used to do. I started these other good deeds that I did not used to do before. You know, so, so that way, this Ramadan can really become unique and outstanding in our lives and in our records. And this month is also month of many other good deeds, month of charity. You know, the Prophet Wasallam is reported that he would walk and a charity will pour from his hand wherever he is walking. Whatever he had, he would give it in the in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, I, I, you know, whatever for charity that he had. So let us, inshallah, think from now on that in this month uh, I can give some charity, and and we prepare ourselves uh, mentally uh, and uh, psychologically that I will give some money from my accounts that I have. Uh, you know, of course, uh, everybody. Uh, is different in terms of their capacities. Uh, one person, you know, uh, can can give, for example, a dollar a day. Another person can give a thousand dollar a day. So everybody is different, but uh, we just do our best. And Allah knows our capacity. Allah knows what we have and we don't have. And so even if we give one dollar for the sake of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah, one dollar a day and thirty dollar at the end of the month. Inshallah, that will be that could be more than thirty thousand dollar of other people, if the degree of our sincerity, the degree of our, you know, uh, truthfulness is higher. So Allah knows about those incentives and, and motivations and, and the degree of our intentions. And uh, so all of that is very important. But we have to be really charitable. You know, our our masajid uh, these days uh, do not have the same revenue that they usually collect in Ramadan. So we have to be charitable to our massage, to all the uh, poor and needy around us, especially so many people now as a result of this coronavirus have lost so much finances and so much of their uh, basic needs. So how can we help them, you know, and, and share with them uh, and give charity to them? And uh, in uh, Muslim countries, there, there are a lot of problems, a lot of issues. Imagine those people who are uh, working for their next meal, and if they cannot bring income for the next meal, then they don't have another meal. And now those people, uh, now they are locked down in their houses and they cannot work, and the governments are also are not helping them much. Uh, so, you know, imagine what kind of sad situation they have. Let us, inshallah, be charitable even before Ramadan, send them some help. And during Ramadan, we should make sure that we are helping those family members and relatives and friends, uh, whoever, wherever they are, that they can, inshallah, also uh, get something in this month of Ramadan and they can have a good meal and, and uh, uh, some of their basic needs met. Yes, Ramadan is month of charity. Ramadan is the month of revelation of Quran. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات بينات من الهدى والفرقان. That uh, Allah says that the, uh, Ramadan is the month in which Quran was revealed uh, with a set of clear guidance for humanity uh, and uh, and uh, explanations and evidences. Uh, so uh, Quran was revealed in this month uh, and uh, in the month of Ramadan. This has uh, two meanings, you know, uh, because uh, when people think about it, that oh, uh, you know, Quran was revealed within 23 years of, of the life of the Prophet sallam, How could Quran says that Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan? And there is two explanations of this. The first explanation is that the whole Quran was revealed to the angel. Uh, Allah sent it from the highest level of uh, heaven to the lowest level of heaven to Jibreel alayhi salam to, uh, uh, so that Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel, uh, can receive the whole Quran in that night and then bring it to the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi from time to time uh, within the next 23 years based on the uh, 
uh, instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one explanation that in this month, Quran was revealed uh, to the, from the highest level of heaven to the lowest level of heaven uh, in this one night, in this month of Ramadan. And particularly in the night of Qadr that Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil Qadr, we have revealed the Quran in the night of Qadr. And Surah Dukhan, Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil Mubaraka, we have sent it in a blessed night. So that's the night of Qadr in Ramadan. Uh, another explanation of uh, revelation of Quran in the month of Ramadan is that the first revelation, the first, the very first revelation that came to the Prophet sallallahu that uh, you know, Allah uh, gave these five verses of Quran in the first revelation to the Prophet Sallallahu So this was revealed also in Ramadan. So it, the beginning of revelation started in Ramadan. The revelation started with Ramadan, and the whole Quran was revealed to the angel in this month of Ramadan. So in that meaning, Quran is uh, revealed in Ramadan. And so Ramadan is the month of celebration of the anniversary of Quran. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected Ramadan with, uh, uh, with uh, Quran. Uh, Allah connected fasting with Quran through Ramadan. You know, otherwise fasting was prescribed on people before as, as the verse that I recited. Allah said that fasting has been prescribed to people before. And to, uh, we know that Jesus, alayhi salam, Isa, alayhi salam, Musa, alayhi salam, they all fasted and their original followers, they all fasted the way they fasted. And today still they have some form of fasting in those religions. So fasting is, was not new to Islam. But what made fasting new and unique was that Allah related fasting to the uh, uh, to, uh, Quran. So Allah said, uh, you know, uh, fast so that you develop taqwa. And then taqwa is meant for the Quran. Allah says that, uh, you know, in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Lam Mim, Thalik Al-Kitabu La Rayba Fi, Hudal Lil Muttaqeen. Allah says that this Quran, in which there is no doubt whatsoever, uh, you know, is a guidance for people of taqwa. So, see, fasting helps us to develop taqwa. And then the more taqwa we have, the more we can benefit from Quran. So you see the relationship of taqwa with Quran. The more taqwa we have, the more we enjoy the Quran, the more we benefit from the Quran, the more we understand the Quran. That's why during the day we fast so that we develop taqwa, and then at night we listen to Quran and taraweeh. Uh, and if you really think about it, compare the quality of your fasting during the day uh, with the quality of listening to Quran at night. If we really fasted during the day with a high quality, then we would really listen to Quran much more attentively and enjoy the Quran at night much more. And if we didn't have a good fasting during the day and we complained and all of that, then at night we would not enjoy the Quran as much. So fasting is related to Quran and Ramadan connects it uh, because Allah sent the Quran in the month of Ramadan. So th this is what makes uh, the fasting in Islam unique, that it is related to the Quran, to the revelation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month wants us to really put a lot of time with Quran. So it is important that we, you know, uh, make some very specific efforts from now on that in this month, you know, I'm going to recite a good amount of Quran. I'm going to read with translation, with tafsir and understanding. And I'm going to really try to memorize some verses of Quran in this month. And I will really try to apply the teachings of Quran in my life. And I will try to share the message of Quran with others in this month. So I, we should really plan so. We should really think about it, how I can uh, apply the uh, Quran in every day of my life during the month. And uh, then uh, the month will become a month of Quran truly for us. And especially that we are now doing taraweeh in the house. So, you know, uh, we can inshallah do taraweeh uh, individually or collectively. It's better to do it collectively if one of us in the house uh, has memorized some Quran that, that they should lead the prayers and do the taraweeh with the family together. 
uh, but if some families have problem or they cannot uh, do together, they can do it individually. Um, and uh, so basically we have more opportunity to recite the Quran and to memorize the Quran because in, in, in masjid when we go, we just listen to the Imam, uh, but here now we have to read ourselves. We have to really memorize some Quran so I can read it in the uh, fasting, in the Taraweeh. Uh, and also I can, uh, I have to really understand the meaning as much as possible. So we, we better make some extra efforts uh, uh, of relating with Quran and we should really become more familiar with Quran in this Ramadan. And we should listen to a lot of other talks about Quran and tafsir of Quran so that at the end of the month, we feel like now I'm more familiar with this book. Now I'm much closer to this book. Now I have a better relationship with Quran. Now I really enjoy the Quran. Now I really look forward to uh, open the Quran and to read some verses. You know, So our attitude should change with the Quran in this month. We should really make some extra efforts to benefit from this month. And this month is also month of, uh, you know, Qiyam, Qiyam al-Layl, usually in month of Ramadan in the last 10 days, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, as are, are used to uh, be in the masjid, uh, a lot of people used to do a, a take off in the masjid and a lot of other people would come uh, and stay all night uh, and do uh, Qiyam and others. Uh, but now we can still do that, the Qiyam at home, alhamdulillah, and uh, we can plan our schedule if it's possible to get up uh, an hour earlier before the suhoor time or half an hour even early and at least offer a few rakat or at, at the minimum at two rakat and, uh, and make some special dua. Special dua during the time of suhoor is very important. Special dua during iftar time is very important. You know, a special dua during the day and after the adhan and prayers. So we need to really, inshallah, uh, get the habit of uh, praying tahajjud and doing qiyam al-layl in this month. Uh, and also, you know, uh, being, inshallah, more and more, uh, uh, you know, uh, caring for our family members in this month. Let us make sure that we are extra kind to each other. Let us make sure that we are extra uh, you know, compassionate uh, towards each other, towards family members, towards relatives. And we do extra work to check on our family, on our relatives, on our friends uh, in the, during this month. Uh, and especially those family members, members who are victims of coronavirus, you know, uh, let's check on them. Let's continuously make dua for them. And uh, let us, inshallah, ourselves, uh, you know, treat this month as if this is our last month because so many people that now are dying or have already died, you know, but they never thought that last Ramadan, uh, last year was their last Ramadan. They may have thought that, oh, I have so many Ramadans left in my life, but that was their last Ramadan. So for any of us, this Ramadan could be the last Ramadan and how should we benefit from this month that as a last Ramadan will remain with us forever. Uh, Yes, we have to think about that and we have to be extra uh, kind and, and compassionate towards other family members and try to help them as much as possible. Um, and each one of us can do a lot of things. Uh, I know, you know in, the, in these programs, usually we have some time for question and answer, but today the organizers asked me to go uh, until uh, 10 p.m. So we have only a few minutes left. And in this few minutes, I just uh, want to, inshallah, uh, reflect and make some special dua with you together uh, for everybody, including our beloved uh, brothers, uh, uh, our brothers, uh, Ashfaq Parker, uh, Parkar, Ashfaq Parkar, uh, who is uh, the organizer of this uh, weekly uh, Quran uh, program, his father who just passed away. I just learned about it a few minutes ago. Uh, and so uh, make a special dua for his father and for himself and for all other organizers of this program who are spending time day and night to come up with these kind of programs for all of us uh, and make a special dua for uh, uh, all the you know victims of coronavirus uh, all over the world and around us and uh, also uh, those who are already uh, you know uh, sick uh, we make dua for them 
So uh, inshallah, it's a very special moment of uh, dua. And let's turn our hearts uh, towards Allah and uh, and uh, say things from the bottom of our hearts and say amin to it so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it in the highest uh, level and quality. Allahumma taqabal minna, Allahumma taqabal minna, innaka anta al-sami wa al-alim, wa tub alayna, innaka anta al-tawab rahim Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa kafir anna sayyiatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar. Allahumma anzilna munzalam mubarakan wa anta khayrul munzilin. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya dhal jalal wal ikram, Allahumma... اللهم بارك لنا في شهر شعبان وبلغنا رمضان يا الله يا رحمن يا الله thank you for all of these wonderful opportunities you have given us يا الله we cannot thank you enough and do not take us in our ingratitude يا الله shower your mercy on all of us يا الله shower your mercy in this special month of Ramadan for uh, the whole Ummah of Islam. Ya Allah, bring this month uh, while we are recovering from this coronavirus. Ya Allah, uh, uh, take the coronavirus away with this month of Ramadan from the humanity and from the Ummah. Ya Allah, make this trial and test easy on everybody, all human beings, especially uh, the believers, the Muslims, Ya Allah, Make this test easy and help them to succeed in this test. Ya Allah, help all of us to succeed in this test and trial of this uh, crisis and this uh, pandemic. Ya Allah, help this crisis to be over uh, for the khair of Islam, for the khair of Muslims, for the khair of humanity. Ya Allah, all those people who are sick as a result of this coronavirus, give them healing and shifa. Ya Allah, make this uh, uh, shifa easier on them. Ya Allah, reduce their pain and uh, get the pain away from them. Ya Allah, make it easy on themselves and on their families. Ya Allah, if their time has expired and if they are supposed to leave this world, Ya Allah, give them the degree of a shaheed and a martyr to any of them who die as the Prophet wasallam promised. Ya Allah, indeed, uh, you have uh, given us uh, a huge trial in this time and a huge test and a huge sign of you. Ya Allah, help us to internalize these concepts and these thoughts and to really come out of this test and trial successful. Ya Allah, help us to embrace Ramadan with enthusiasm. Ya Allah, help us to embrace Ramadan with excitement. Ya Allah, help us to make other family members and other friends excited. Ya Allah, shower your mercy on all of us and forgive the, uh, those who have passed away already, including the father of our beloved brother, Ashfaq uh, Parkar, uh, and all other uh, members uh, of our families if they have passed away recently. Ya Allah, shower your mercy on them and forgive them and give them the best of next life and give them the best position in Jannah. Ya Allah, accept our humble efforts and accept uh, from all of us in the highest level. Ya Allah, protect us from all kinds of evils and protect the Ummah of Islam from all kinds of evils. And Ya Allah, uh, remove the oppression from uh, Muslims and from every place after this crisis and this Ramadan. Ya Allah, accept our dua. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Amin. Jazakum Allahu khayr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar.